Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again. My name is Jack, and this is Alternative Me, where we take a look at the best, the greatest alternative bands from the early 90s, an era that uh, is very near and dear to my heart. It's when I really uh, became a big fan of music and decided that that's what I wanted to do with my life. Um, today, we're going to talk about Liz Fair, who is a uh, a very interesting character in the world of alternative music. She's rather polarizing, um, and she's had um, a diverse career, I guess you could say. Um, it's it's still going on. She's still making records. But it all started back in 1993 for her when she released uh, her debut album, Exile in Guyville, for Matador Records. Now, this record, um, you know, was in extremely impressive for a debut album, uh, especially someone who, uh, like Liz Fair, wasn't necessarily a very um, accomplished musician. Um, she was a relatively new songwriter, and she put out this very uh, revealing, um, soulful, uh, emotionally explicit record uh, of her life, and it did extremely well. Uh, critically, it was very acclaimed. It, uh, in 1993, both Spin Magazine and The Village Voice said it was the number one album of the year. So right there, I mean, that's pretty high acclaim. And Rolling Stone Magazine later on said it was one of the top 500 records of all time. That's pretty impressive for a debut album. Um, you you know you can't really expect much more than that. It, it's an it's an amazing album. It's an album that you can listen to over and over and over, and always notice something new. You'll always notice a, a lyric or a, a chord progression or something. Something in there is going to catch you each time because it's it's got a lot of tracks on it, and it was sort of it sort of has a very home recorded feel to it. Um, it was recorded by Brad Wood. Um, in in Chicago, and it's um, it's something else. It's a record that I think anyone uh, who's interested in song in songwriting, or in indie rock in general, I mean, it's a it's kind of it's kind of a legendary record. I think everyone should have it. Everyone should listen to it. And she's um, she's also one of the purveyors of uh, you know the the women in rock movement that came along in the 90s when we started to see women in rock music start to get a lot of play on the radio, on MTV. Um, they started touring. We saw the Lilith Fair became a thing. Um, it was a big deal, and she was a huge part of it. Um, and she was very um, camera-friendly, let's just say. Um, she had a couple videos on MTV, but she had, I, I believe, um, severe case of uh, stage fright. She, she didn't like performing live, so she didn't tour very much uh, in those days, especially when that, that album came out. She didn't do a lot of touring. Um, I don't know that that hurt her at all, but uh, it certainly was, it was certainly bizarre. I've, I've never saw, I never got to see Liz Fair. Um, I was someone who was really wanted to, but I never got the chance. Um, she put out another album uh, in 1994, just a year later, called Whip Smart. Uh, kind of capitalizing on the success of her previous record um, in a way where, I guess, maybe to substitute for the fact that she wasn't touring, she put an album out only a year later. And that album did really well, too. It had a, it had a, a pretty successful single and video for Supernova. And again, like she was nominated for a Grammy, a best female, best, best female performance. I mean, that's pretty great you know, second record. <laughs> so she was definitely an overachiever, uh, you know, early on. And then there was a little break in her career. We didn't really hear from her um, for a few years uh, till she put out an album called White Chocolate Space Egg in 1998. And I think that this record is underrated. Uh, I, this is a record that I bought a little bit later on. And um, after giving it a listen, it gets, it's kind of it's a little underrated. There's some really good um, songs on it. Um, and... Uh, Polyester Bride being one of her, I think Polyester Bride might be one of her best songs. It's just very catchy. Um, it's a very, very 90s, uh, very 90s song. So, um, yeah, th those those records came out and um, kind of solidified her 
in 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 the indie rock world, in the alternative music world. Um, and then um, and then we kind of didn't really hear from her for a little bit. As she decided to sort of change her image quite a. Yeah, quite a bit. Like she kind of became a, a pop star. Like she wanted to be a little bit more um, radio friendly, a little more MTV friendly. She had a song called "Why Can't I" that did really well. It got went up to number thirty two on Billboard. So she de- definitely achieved that goal. Um, but it was it was a change. I think she might have alienated her previous fan base just a little bit. Um, although I don't really think that bothered her very much. At that point, you know, she was a parent and she had other goals. And um, I don't think that was ever really a concern of her. I don't think it's ever been a concern of her because a theme in her career is that she's going to kind of do what what she wants, whether it's what the critics or her record label are fans of. Um, that just kind of has that in common with another artist that I talked about here on Alternative Me, uh, PJ Harvey. They kind of have that in common. Uh, artists that are interested in expressing themselves, whether it's what their record label wants or not. Um, but uh, she had another album in 2005 called Somebody's Miracle. I'm not going to lie. I've never heard it. <laughs> I did not hear that record. Um, I've heard, you know, I've heard like the single and stuff like that. Um, but I, I don't, it didn't make, it didn't make much of a dent. To, to my in my to my recollection no one really talks about it who what people talk about is her album that came after that which is called fun style and that came out in 2010 and uh this record was really different this record had rapping on it it had electronica it almost kind of went in this weird like almost like a late era madonna type of feel to it it was very bizarre Almost, um, it almost seemed a little silly, uh, but um, but it was what it was the record she wanted to make. It was what it was the art that she was feeling, and um, it ended up losing her management, and she lost you know, her record label, and I think she lost a lot of fans. But again, that wasn't a main concern of her and, and of hers, and I don't think it it ever will be, which makes her um, you know make it's what makes her such an honest songwriter and you know she's not afraid to reveal those things that's it's what it's what made her first album exile and guyville so special it was just it's just so revealing she opened up her soul and she talked about things that i think a lot of people are, are maybe shy about um especially when it comes to revealing your insecurities in in terms of your relationships um i mean she she's sold over three million records in her career, so she is, she's a pretty successful artist in under any measure. But um, but critically, um, she's gonna go down as one of the best, and um, I would put her in the category of legend. <laughs> and um, again, uh, those 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 first few records were on Matador. I've been talking about that record label a lot. That's a very very influential record label. They recognized her talent early on. And they were able to put that record out, and it was a big, big deal. Um, if you are interested in getting into Liz Fair, uh, you know, Exile and Guyville is a no-brainer. You should have that record, whether you're interested in her or not. That's just a good record. Um, 94's Whip Smart, also a good record. White Chocolate Space Egg, to a lesser extent, also good. Everything after that isn't necessarily something that I would say is, um, you know, kind of crucial listening. But... Um, but if you like pop, you know, and and you're interested in someone who's willing to take some chances, you can go ahead and listen to that later stuff. It's you know, it's it it definitely has uh, creative merit, as we say. <laughs> um, but yeah, Liz Fair was a huge influence when I heard when I first heard Liz Fair, and I first that heard that record. It was it really really made me want to make music because um, something about her voice, her her kind of her low, her alto voice was just kind of very frank and matter of fact um she wasn't trying to sound like anybody else um it was I, I, it had a uh, an appeal that was sort of amateur in style and it uh, um so like someone who who had been writing songs in private for so long and then all of a sudden just came out with this record to reveal to the world um you know warts and all and ever and that that inspired me in a in a big way, and uh, all my friends loved this record. I don't know anyone who doesn't like this record. Um, 
Exile in Guyville certainly is, um, is, it should be a priority for you to own. And um, I listen to it all the time. I listened to it the other day, and it, it holds up. It's a, it's a great album. She's an important figure in the, in the music world, always will be. She should, if she's not, she, she should definitely go in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And, uh, and that's about all I have to say about Liz Fair. I got nothing but good, nothing but love for, for my girl Liz Fair. Um, if you guys, uh, if you guys are interested, uh, in more alternative me, check out, uh, the other videos that I have up here on this channel. Make sure you subscribe. Um, hit that notification bell so every time a video comes up, you're going to get notified. I put up about two videos a week. And um, I'm as usual, as is tradition, I'm going to close out this episode with uh, an acoustic cover of the Liz Fair song, Never Said. And this is from Exile in Guyville from 1993. Hope you enjoy it. Baby 